Hi there guys, my name is Dracolos and welcome to the video. Today we're going to look at some of the early to mid game armour and weapon sets that you can get in RuneScape 3 Iron Man mode. This is a quick guide to show you how to get them when you can't buy them off other players like you normally would. On the screen right now I'm going to have an info card with timestamps so that you can skip to the part of the video that you need to get to as I can see this video getting quite long and I imagine not all of you are going to need to sit through the entire thing. So if you want to watch the whole thing do, if you want to just click ahead to a specific bit then go ahead but without further ado let's get into it. So we're going to start off with the very basic melee gear. Now you'll see here I'm in Barbarian Village. If I just head into this little hut here, we trade this guy and he sells us medium and full helmets. Now most of you guys are probably looking at this guy and this is really obvious, I already know this. But it's important information that for those who are new to the game or maybe come back after a long time not playing it like I myself did recently. Northwest of the Burthorp Lodestone here you've got this blacksmith and he sells your two-handed swords right up to adamant quality. Two-handers are really important, you, you're unlikely to be dual wielding early in the game so two-handers are really the best way to go. Now if you go to the Varrock Fountain in the centre of Varrock and just head slightly northwest to this fairly open building and trade this guy here, you can buy chainmail bodies and plate bodies. He only sells plate bodies up to Mithril, unfortunately, but it will do the job at the low levels. And if you head to the Alcarid Lodestone and head southwest and go talk to Louis, he will trade you plate legs and he trades up to Adamant, so that's really handy. Now the next thing as you'll see on the screen here is Dragon Slayer. This is a free to play quest, it used to be the hardest free to play quest, I don't know if it still is. Um, however, you will want to be doing this so that you can equip the rune plate body and also the blue dragon hide body, but the most important one is definitely the rune plate body. The rune plate body will be one of your best non-degradable chess pieces for quite a while for melee combat, so I recommend doing this as soon as you can. The only solid requirement is 33 quest points, but it's worth having the skills that are up on the requirements list anyway, although it can be done before you've got those requirements if you know what you're doing. Now once you complete a Dragon Slayer you'll have access to the Champion's Guild just south of Varrock, right next to the Lodestone. If you go in and head upstairs and trade the bloke who's walking around up there, he sells some rune armor items including plate legs as well as also some green dragon uh, items, the van braces and the chaps. He also sells a couple of one handed rune weapons so this is really handy early on for getting those early rune items. Now the next thing we're going to look at as well related to Dragon Slayer is literally right above the Edgeville Lodestone. You'll talk to him during the quest anyway, but in case you've already done it and you're just coming back, you talk to this guy Oziak, trade him, he sells you green dragon hide body and a rune plate body. Now the next thing we're going to look at as far as melee goes is the Lost City quest. Now this is the first quest you want to do as far as unlocking dragon weapons go. It gives you the ability to wield the dragon longsword and the dragon daggers and also gives you access to the area where you can buy them. It only requires 31 crafting and 36 wood cutting. You do have to kill a tree spirit with very little, uh, with no armor and very little in the way of weapons. However, it's very easy to do if you have a half decent magic level. Uh, so do this quest as soon as you can and then you'll be able to buy your first dragon melee weapon. So now that we've done the Lost City, I don't know about you guys, but I certainly didn't know actually where to go to buy my dragon weapons as I'd always bought them off of other players. So the way you go is when you get into Zanaris through the shed in Lumbridge Swamp, just head southwest to these doors here. Now you want to make sure you've got a cut diamond in your inventory because these strange looking dudes out the front are going to want one before they'll let you in. And that does go for every time until you've done, I believe, Fairy Tale Part 3. Um, so once you've given them their cut diamond, you head in here and you want to head northeast. I briefly forget where I'm going here, which is why I hang around a bit. But you want to head northeast, and there's a fairy next to a tree, and she has some dragon weapons on some tree stumps next to the tree. Just trade her, and she will sell you your daggers and your long swords. Now the next thing we're going to look at is something that I've not actually seen mentioned in, in many other guides and it's the Obsidian Cape. I think a lot of people forget about this now because it's such old content but for Iron Man, especially at mid-level, it's very, very useful. Now obviously you can get the Blade Storm Cape from the level 1 trolls in Birthort but that gives, I think, a plus 1 uh, damage, uh, strength bonus, sorry. Um, however, the Obsidian Cape is really going to be your most reliable melee bonus cape until you can get a hold of something like a Fire Cape or a Skill Cape much later on in the game. Now the way you want to go about this is basically just come to the Tazar City as I have 
and just basically kill the guys wandering around the Tazar city, just train up whatever combat style you want to train, keep picking up the Tockle, and after about 40 minutes or so you should have enough Tockle to buy the Obsidian Cape. So now we're moving on to ranged gear and the first thing you're going to want to do is just west of the Fountain in Varrock, head just south of the plate body shop and you'll find the archery shop. This sells your basic level bows up to maple um, and basic ammo and armor. This will start you out for those early levels. Now the next thing we're going to look at in terms of ranged is fletching. Now this, the first few levels of fletching will feel really redundant and quite boring but it's worth leveling up. At level 65 you can make yourself a U short bow and more importantly at level 69 you can make the rune crossbow and the offhand variant. This is really important, the rune crossbow is such a strong mid-level ranged weapon you will be using it for a long time I can guarantee. Now if you're into slayer like me you can also buy broad arrows and bolts from your slayer master for 35 points for I believe 100 of each. Um, or you can get the ability to actually make them yourself for 300 points, which I highly recommend doing as they're tier 50, but they deal much more damage than their rune counterparts. Now this is just a quick tip for those of you who are going to be fletching. You can buy a thousand feathers a day from each of the fishing shops in RuneScape. It only costs, I believe, three gold per feather, so it's 3,000 gold for a thousand. So there's one here in Port Sarim, and there's another in Catherby and in the Fishing Guild as well. Now the last few things I have to mention with regards to ranged armour and weapons, I don't have proper footage for, so I've made some more of these info cards which will, you'll hopefully find useful. The first one is ranged armour crafting. Now these are the levels you're going to need for carapace armour, green dragon hide and blue dragon hide. Now green dragon hide can be bought, so it's a little bit redundant to craft it, but if you really really hate doing quests then this would be another way to go about getting a hold of it. Blue Dragon Hide does also seem redundant when you see my next point, however this is really useful if you're going to do clue scrolls. You can't really get Blue Dragon Hide any other way than crafting it, so if you have the patience to do the crafting I recommend getting a set of Blue Dragon Hide anyway just for the clue scrolls. Now talking about clue scrolls, something I can't recommend enough, I've mentioned it in a previous Iron Man guide video, is actually doing hard level clue scrolls. For ranged gear this is really really good, especially for that mid game ranged gear. You frequently get black dragon hide and magic composite bows as rewards, and you can also get god trim dragon hide, which is the same tier as the black dragon hide armor, but it looks really cool and it's also useful if you're going to go to god wars for slayer tasks or possibly even for bossing. Uh, so hard clue scrolls are actually incredibly important for that mid-level uh, ranged gear. All of my Black Dragon Hide came from there because there's no way I was going to be getting that high of a crafting level that early on. Now the last thing I'm going to mention with regards to ranged gear is the quest Animal Magnetism. Now as you can see from the requirements up on the screen, this can be done fairly early on. It's a pretty easy quest, it's actually fairly entertaining as well. Uh, the XP rewards are not fantastic but it does give you access to the Ava's device variations. Now there's I believe three possibly four variations, I know the final one requires the Do No Evil quest which is a much higher level quest that you'll be doing much much later on in the game. But as you level up your range and I believe your crafting and possibly fletching as well, you can go back to Ava and get it upgraded. Now this, this saves you from having to pick up your ammo which is cool but it also gives a really good ranged bonus that you'll be using early to mid game and actually pretty much until you get a skill cape you'll be using this for your cape slot when ranging so I, I recommend getting it as soon as possible. So now we're going to move on to magic gear. Now the first thing you're going to see me do here is not so much getting armor or weapons but actually rune crafting. Now this is obviously important because you do need runes to cast spells. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm going to the abyss for my rune crafting. The reason I'm using the abyss is because a lot of the talismans in the game are actually quite hard to get a hold of in uh, Iron Man mode and even some of the ones that aren't it's still easier to go to the abyss. Now if you've not done, if you don't know what the abyss is or you've not done the mini quest to access it I will put a link in the description to the rune wiki guide. Uh, I couldn't get footage of it myself because unfortunately I've already done the mini quest on all of my accounts and I don't have time right now to make a new account just for that footage. So I will link in the description the guide for those of you who haven't done it. But basically when you get here you want to go through one of the obstacles in the outer ring, usually pick whichever one is related to the skill that's the highest, I believe they are agility, thieving, fire making, wood cutting and mining. 
And then you want to go around this inner ring and you'll see the room logos on the doors until you find the one you, that you want. Now you will still need the required rune crafting level to make the runes, so don't try to make runes that you don't have the rune crafting level for because you'll just be sat on an altar with a with an invent full of essence. Once you've rune crafted your runes, you can then use the home teleport to go back to Edgeville, bank your runes and then go for the next run. Now you can also get rune essence pouches to allow you to take more rune essence with you. Again, I believe that is mentioned in the rune wiki guide for the mini quest. So if you check that link, that should tell you everything you need to know as far as rune, uh, rune essence pouches are concerned. Now the next card we're gonna see come up on the screen is gonna be information about crafting magic armor now the reason this is all crafting is because unfortunately you can't really purchase any magic armor for the first few levels uh, from any npcs which is kind of a pain in the ass but what you can do is from level 10 to level 16 you can make impied armor you need level 16 for the full lot including the wand and book and then level 21 you can start making spider silk armor up to 26 for the weapons as well and then at level 52 up to 61 you can make the batwing armor and weapons these are pretty effective i didn't get around to actually making a full set of batwing on my personal iron man um, because of what i'm going to mention next but definitely the impied and spider silk is worth going for and making now for the reason why I never managed to get full Batwing on my Iron Man, and that is the Wizard's Guild in the Anil. Now to get here you need 66 magic, which does make this mid game rather than early game, but it's very very important once you hit 66 magic that you come here. The reason for this is the robe store owner, the guy wearing full mystic and the mage cape, sells a full set of blue and white mystic, as well as the mystic wand and orb. Now this is tier 50 magic armor and weapons so it's really really good to have you can get mystic robe drops from slayer monsters but they're fairly rare depending on what you're killing so this is a guaranteed way of getting a full set plus that tier 50 weapon also in the wizards guild very very helpfully the one guy without a cape without a cape on sells a massive selection of runes including once a day being able to sell you a thousand of each elemental rune and they cost 17 gold each meaning a thousand costs 17k so by this point in the game it doesn't cost a huge amount and they're really important to keep stocked up on those elemental runes now we've just got a couple more things to talk about as far as magic is concerned and the first one of those is the major arena in the wilderness now Again, like me, a lot of you may have forgotten that this existed. It's fairly old content, but it's very, very important to do it. It requires 60 magic to start. Um, however, the, the actual boss fight has become pretty easy over the years, especially with the addition of EOC. If you have 50 plus defense, it will be very, very easy to do. This nets you a god staff of your choice, either Saradamin, Guthix, or Zamorak and a cape to match. Now the cape I believe is ranked as tier 50 but the staff is ranked as tier 60. So this is pretty much your equivalent of a dragon longsword for magic. They're extremely useful and you'll probably be using this for a fair while so I can't recommend doing this enough. Now for those of you who haven't done this before I'm just going to show a quick sped up clip of how to get there. I'm going from the north bank in East Ardun, just running across the log balance there, pulling the lever in this little hut and then when we teleport up you just need to slash the web at the northern part of this little lava island and then once you slash through here you want to run to the west and that massive structure right there is the major arena itself however you won't actually be going in there initially what you want to do is go into the little hut just here slash through these cobs cobwebs and pull the lever once you're inside you'll want to talk to the guy in the hood who's right there in the blue coat he will start you on the mini game once you're done you jump in this pool here and this takes you to a room with the three god statues once you finish the mini game you'll pray at one of these statues and get your cape and staff now the last thing we're going to talk about specifically as far as mage is concerned is the lunar diplomacy quest now you want to do this anyway to get the lunar spellbook it's a very useful spellbook especially for skilling but it's also got the lunar armor as a reward now i remember back years and years and years ago long before evolution of combat the lunar armor was kind of considered a bit useless 
now it's really really good it's essentially tier 60 armor although i believe it only requires uh, 40 defense to wear as the quest only requires 40 defense to complete and you have to wear it as part of the quest um, the staff itself is not particularly useful you will be using your god staff rather than your lunar staff but the armor is fantastic the ring and the amulet are brilliant each piece of the armor has a magic bonus as well as a very high defense bonus so i really can't recommend it enough i mean you essentially get this armor for free all you have to do is the quest the skills can be a little bit grindy to get but it's worth it now the last few things in this video are a little bit more miscellaneous, they relate to uh, all of the combat styles and they're also kind of down to personal opinion whether you want to do them or not, although I would recommend all of them for various different reasons. The first one we've got here is the Slayer combat items. Now most Slayer monsters drop uh, some form of melee boots up here. I've got bronze through to dragon with an example of at least one Slayer monster that drops them. I wouldn't worry about the first few but certainly Mithril three to Dragon are very useful early to mid game. You've also got Basilisks, Turoths and Kurusks that drop ranged boots. And then you've got the Abyssal Demons 85 Slayer that drop the Whip, the Wand and the Orb which are very very useful tier 70 and 75 weapons. And then lastly from the Slayer Masters themselves you can purchase the Leaf Bladed Spear, the Slayer Staff and the Broad Ammo. These are specifically designed for use against Turoths and Kurusks but they're very very useful as they're tier 50. So the next thing we're going to look at here in the miscellaneous section is the Barrows minigame. Now many of you will be familiar with this, some of you may not be if you've only started playing uh, in the last few years as it did lose a lot of its legitimacy after Evolution of Combat came out but for Iron Man it's incredibly useful. Up here I've got some recommended requirements, you don't have to have these to start it but I really really recommend it from doing it quite a bit on my own Iron Man. I would say these are realistically the minimum stats that you want to have. It rewards tier 70 armor and weapons. Now Guthan's set is my main target and I would imagine it will be for a lot of other Iron Men as it's incredibly useful for healing at bosses. General Grada is the one that comes to mind immediately. Um, Aram's set is also very useful as tier 70 magic armor and weapons as is Carol's for ranged. And then you've got Torags, Verax and Darox who are all melee sets that you can mix and match for Slayer, bossing, whatever else you want to use them for. They do degrade, but it's 100,000 charges, which since Evolution of Combat came out, that is a lot. It takes a really long time for these to degrade, and if you're using them right, you're using them actively, you're not using them on low-level targets, then you will be making more than enough money to cover the repairs and still make plenty of profit. So the final two things that I'm going to talk about in the miscellaneous section, and in this video in general, are a couple of quests that I recommend you do for your Iron Man uh, for some combat items. The first one is the Branches of Darkmire quest. Now this is a relatively high level quest. It does have some high skill requirements as you can see. I've not yet done it on my own Iron Man. 63 farming and 76 woodcutting are still evading me but I will be getting to it very, very soon, hopefully. Now, the main reason to do this quest is, as you see at the bottom of the rewards list, you get the Blisterwood weapons. These are tier 70 non-degradable weapons, so they're extremely useful once you hit 70 in your combat stats. You can get ranged weapons, magic weapons, and melee weapons from this Blisterwood material so long as you have done this quest so i can't recommend enough getting these stats and doing this quest as soon as you can now the very last thing i'm going to mention is the friendly trials quest now this is very much down to personal opinion i think it's worth doing i think the helmets are very useful not everyone agrees with me so it really is whether you think it's worth doing uh, personally whether you do this or not I mean that goes for everything in this video but most of it is fairly solid advice this one however really really is down to personal opinion um, I would say it's definitely worth doing the Berserker Helm, the Archer Helm, the Farseer Helm all have damage bonuses. They're all very, very useful until you start getting Barrow's armor. And even then, they're still useful because they're non-degradable. They're tier 55. They're very, very strong for their level. They're better than they've got better armor bonuses than their tier 50 rune, mystic, etc. equivalents. So I really recommend doing it. It's a fun quest as well, and if you're an old school player like me, it's a bit of nostalgia too. So I say do it. But it's up to you really. 
And with that, we're at the end of the guide now. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. I'll be making a lot more Iron Man guides in the future, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.